Hey, I think I addressed everything I wanted to say last night. Uh, my people that are running three days at the fair, um, they're training for 50 fucking miles. You got to remember, if you have an off day and you miss one day, the same rules apply as it did in the, in, um, the Train Like a Mother Club. I, you miss one run, I don't really care. You miss runs every three Tuesdays in a row, I'm going to start caring and be like, hey, either, what's going on? What's happening on Mondays? We need, why can't we get our shit together on Tuesdays, right? So, because th that three in a row is a pattern. Three in a month is a pattern. Maybe we need to take other steps to make some changes in your schedule or find some backups so the run can get done because we're trying to train 50 fucking miles. At the same time, though, if everything else is getting done, I'm not that worried about it because it's your first 50 fucking miler. Like, we are not going to be training for performance or finish time. We're just trying to survive the first one. And then if we want to go for, for performance, we can talk after that one's done. So... Um, the stuff you guys are doing, and Shara, this is you as well since you're here, we're doing the desk series three times a day. Um, Shara, the reason you're doing it is because you're in a muscle packing on phase still, I confirmed with Ellie. Um, for all my three days at the fair people, we are still putting muscle on too. So, um, Shara, is if you can do everything that I'm about to list out, I strongly recommend you do it. If you can't or don't have time, then what you then we do what I told you to do in training peaks and in the last email to you. But so my three days at the fair, people, you're doing the desk series three times a day. You're doing damnation one time, preferably at night before bed. I'll come back to why in a minute. But I do do nine issue right before turning into bed. Yep, is there a sign? Yep, the, yep, you did hear that correctly, and I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Um, a way to read my mind and put it on the screen at the same time it's coming out of my mouth is woo! Got the mind, Jedi mind trick going on. All right, um, squish. Squish ball, I want that at least once per day. I really don't care when. Um, and for three days at the fair, excluding Julie, because she has, oh, she's, got, she's got shit coming up. That y'all don't. Um, well, she's got a f her first 50 fucking miler is coming up sooner than everybody else doing three days at the fair. So, Julie, you're, you, you keep, your instructions aren't totally separate, but you're, you're not doing kettlebells anymore. Everybody else is doing kettlebells. Whatever is in your training peaks, I don't remember if it's three or four, don't come at me like, what you said isn't exactly what's written here, because I'm, I'm talking to you, I'm not looking directly at it. I stand by what's in your training peaks. Um, so whichever kettlebell is in your training peaks, you do that. So kettlebells, I think I have it in there three or four times a week. But this, the death series of animation and squish, we really want to be doing this six days a week. And the kettlebells, it's I defer to training peaks. I'm reasonably certain I have it in there four times a week. And the reason we're doing all of this at the same time. What we're doing with the disc series is that if you remember when Martini Monsters was demonstrating disc series one, and she's like, oh my God, my heart rate's at 174. And she's super fit and way stronger than I am. She can bench press me and two of my kids strapped, strapped together. So her heart rate got up as high as 174 because, and remember she said, this is cardio and I don't do cardio. And I'm like, that's exactly what we're doing. So the disc series, when done properly, is about 12 minutes long. So that's four minute boosts for your metabolism throughout the day to not only pack on more muscle, but also um, rev your metabolism a little bit. So why that matters, the damnation, the reason we're doing that, the, and the second reason that we're doing the desk series beyond that is this was designed to work in concert with the squish ball and the damnation for what's called neuro patterning. Now this sounds a little drastic, but I got a behind the science of it for the year that I was in bed. The year that I was in bed, I had to, I had to start approaching um, life like a coma patient because a year in bed, not able to move very much, is a long time. And so how do you come back from that? I had to start looking at anybody that would have been in the same place that I am and the closest that I could come, people in a coma. Now, bed rest and coma, not totally the same, except for the, the fact that our, my muscles were pretty darn atrophied. A year in bed, like muscles start to break down after three days of disuse. Mine were used for an hour of Pilates every day, thank God. I would be way worse off if I hadn't. Um, and that was it. Then I'd come back home and get right back in bed and stay there till Pilates the next day. It was rough. So I had to start going into the science of what do we do for people in a coma. And it turns out there's a dude that's been doing a lot of research on that exactly. Um, sort of in the Matrix style when Neo's like, like yeah, he comes out of, out, of the, out of the shell and all the, all the goo goes everywhere. And they're like, these are your muscles. You've never used them before. It felt kind of like that. 
Um, and then they stuck all the needles in him to get the to bring the muscles back. It was kind of interesting, but the the the, um, the the directors of that movie, the writers of that film, actually did a whole lot of research on the stimulation uh, necessary to bring a person back and what would you have to go through. And I've been going through a lot of those similar processes. So the most important one is called neuro patterning, and that is getting the muscles to work together in concert so that it's easy for the big muscle groups to take over um, and then you develop bad habits and that's how things get hurt and people get hurt. So um, what I have, a lot of the stuff that I've been doing for me to make sure that my back was speaking to my front, um, I'm, gonna, I'm doing with you guys as well because again, um, if we can go through this whole training cycle and find out at the last minute that your front and your, when I say lock your cage, nothing is happening in the front, that's a problem. Right, and I've come in over time for the two years of another mother runner. I've just watched people be like, "Oh, I know what that is," Ugh! and do exactly the opposite of what I told them to do, which is like actually it starts at locking your cage, happens in the back. It's pulling your bottom part of your shoulder blades together. It's right. That's it. Woof. Because if you think about the front, you're gonna go the wrong way. I said that, and I've watched the video over and over, and I've been like, I I gave the correct cues, but no one remembers it. So we're gonna have to do things a little bit differently. So now I'm reintroducing the fact of the idea of locking and then loading with that big exhale to make your waist as narrow as possible. Because when you're doing that, your lats and your obliques are working together in concert. So um, that neuro patterning, we're trying to make that autonomic, meaning that without having to think too much about it, your obliques and uh, your when, when your when your back moves, your TVA automatically fires and your obliques support you. And it has come to my attention through the research that I've been going into on coma patients um, that that doesn't happen, that ceases to happen for a lot of women when they get pregnant. So a lot of the people that I train have been pregnant at some point in the past for any duration, doesn't really matter if, if you had a C-section or a natural birth or a vaginal birth or when, if it came out of your ears, I don't really care. I don't care if you're pregnant for six weeks or 12 or 12 weeks and you've never delivered a child to term for, any, for one reason or another, I don't care. What matters is this, during that period when your body is changing or getting ready to change a whole lot and it takes your body a while to figure out it's not pregnant anymore, you know, your heart and your soul know it before your endocrine system does. So uh, that that whole, your, your back might continue to not speak to your front for a very, 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 very long time unless we fix it. So this particular series was put together in this order with the, of the idea of doing it six days a week to make sure that those neuro, that um, the neurons are firing the way we want to and the muscles, the muscles, the muscles are moving uh, in correct patterns to support each other. Um, I don't want more breaths exactly, but should I have some? If you want them, I'll give them to you, Shara. Um, but no, as far as I'm concerned right now, you don't have to. I would much rather you did uh, five, five, five sets of desk series um, every day before grabbing the kettlebells. Um, and we can come back to that. But um, Ellie has given me the clearance to have you doing more running starting next month um, and less of the strength. So that's when the kettlebells, I think, will come back in so we can get more bang for our buck with instead of doing strength continuously throughout the day, it'll be like... We'll do two desk series in the day and one kettlebell at night. Because here's the final thing. Um, your body continues to build muscle while you sleep um, under certain conditions. And one of the ways we meet those conditions is to challenge it a whole lot right before it goes to bed. Doesn't mean that all of your strength needs to be right before bed. Um, but it means that when we're in a strength building period, you're going to be consuming like a couple hard boiled eggs. Uh, you're going to do... Um, you're going to do like damnation and kettlebells and uh, then eat two hard boiled eggs before you go to sleep. And I know that sounds awful, but that is the maximum strength building thing you can do. Your body, um, will, if, if you're, when you have finished something due, due to strength and your, the next thing you put in your body, it's like if that's protein, it's going straight to your muscles. So, and your body does continue to build muscle while you sleep overnight. So now that we know that, we're going to start incorporating some of that into the training. Um, and Ellie will get more specific about that um, with you, Shara, since I remember I'm not here to discuss nutrition with anyone. I can, I can barely handle the running conversation. I'm not about to touch food with any of you for any reason. Ars Inferno is a, very, is a part of the death series. Ars Inferno is death series number four. So everything in the death series has a pithy name. I just didn't put all of them in training peaks while I deployed them to you guys. So apologies for that um, and apologize for lack of what feels like the lack, lack of consistency there. Um, so yeah, that's why we want the damnation to happen at night. We're going to be hitting all of the bigger muscle groups for the purposes of neuro patterning and for maximum muscle build. So, um, I can refer you guys to the, to the scientific articles later if you want, but I'm going to keep my New Year's resolution and dry my hair before the next place I have to go today. 
So, moving this back and putting this away. Let's see my sitting on my kid's chair. Because that is hashtag mom life. All right. Oh, I just had a brain fart. Seriously, what are, can you, um, what are the four moves in damnation? I think it's planks, push-ups, Russian twists. Oh my God. It has been that kind of a day, y'all. Side planks. Thank you. Hey, Tam. You're here too. Yay. All right, so remember, when it comes to, oh, I'm gonna have to put my glasses on, I can't see anything. So damnation after the theater tonight, yes please, along with the protein chaser. And double check on the timing of the protein chaser with Ellie, but um, the way that I would normally recommend it to my, uh, my not coma patients, that is, um, would be um, not, not, not like huge amounts of protein, the, amount, the exact specific amount should be determined by her. Um, for me, it's two hard-boiled eggs. It would be, um, you know, doing, uh, doing Death Series number four, Arse Inferno, um, then having the eggs brushing my teeth and starting my, my nighttime routine. So, here we go. When, when it comes to damnation, checking on my time. Shit, I'm going to have to go in a minute. All right, so here's what I care about when it comes to damnation. Uh, sorry. I let you guys go through the process. Here's what people normally do. When you're holding a plank, we start here, right? And we try not to pike our back up too much. And I'm always, and then once we feel strong, we go here. You'll notice something is very, very off. And there are two cues, th two things that are not happening right now that should. Number one, my, knit, my ribs are not knitted together. And number two, I'm not using my glutes. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's the cue for me to leave. All right, uh, we're going to go through this quickly. Shit, shit, shit. Sorry, guys. All right, so when you, remember, we lock the back, load the front with the big exhale. And think about that sensation of knitting the front together. Not like separating the back, but opening this. Shoulders, shoulders back. Not exaggerated, but just back. Big exhale. Ribs knitted. This is where we want to be in a plank with our booty on. The sensation should feel like your armpits are drawing towards your waist and everything is very firm. Your quads are doing no work. Okay? Same with the push-up. And that's another reason I don't want you going too low in the push-up, or rather, I don't want you doing too many push-ups. More is not better if we're not exhaling and knitting together and our, and our back is doing, and our quads are doing work that they shouldn't be doing, okay? And then the Russian twists. As I showed you the other day, a lot of people are like, I can't touch the floor on either side. And I'm like, take a big exhale first. Knit those ribs together. And I bet you can. I don't think the way most people do it is um, it's 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 not instinctual for me. They just kind of come here, hold their breath, and the way they hold their breath pushes this out, and then they can't reach the floor. Notice I can't either. Oh, that my back pop. So this is what most people do, and they say they can't touch the floor. <sighs> Big exhale, and there it is. See the difference? So if you can't reach the floor on both sides, big exhale first. If you have the squish ball, put it between your knees, hold on to it. Both hands should be able to hit the floor still. Okay, and then the side planks. I'm not gonna grab the bosu. Same thing. Here. Booty on. Ribs knitted together. And that is how 
I expected, um, I expected to get compliance like, wow, damnation is so much harder when you know your ribs together. But no one said that, which had me thinking we either need to revisit this cue or we need to revisit this cue in each position. So right now, what I gotta do is get to my fourth workout of the day, which is the TRX slash strength class that my PT says I need to start going to so I can develop the shoulder girdle strength. So my shoulder girdle on my left side is no longer mangled, which is awesome, um, but I'm not, now we gotta develop strength in that area to support my back when I pick things up like children. And that's gonna start with TRX. So sorry, why I had an intention of drying my hair today, but it looks like it's not gonna happen now because I, I literally have to run. Um, but you cry is a really awful workout that they have to do for three days at the fair. Sorry, Karen. All right, so you coached, you loved, you're running at life. If I'm not back tonight, um, I want to hear from each of you. About, and I, what I'm waiting to hear, what I'm expecting to hear is either, wow, when, when I have exhaled properly, when I've locked the back and loaded the front, I absolutely can hit the ground in my Russian twists. Two, Jesus, this is hard. Because no one's really said anything about damnation, and it should have been hard before, and it's gonna be harder now with your booty on and your ribs knitted together, locked, loaded, and loved.